Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, we're going to be talking about all the new updates. I think that Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis is finally doing some things that are getting me really excited again. Really liking some of the things they've done, some of the ways they're kind of motivating us to play these, these game modes, and I want to get into that. I'm just going to kind of go through the notices. I'm going to just start with the character maximum level increase. It kind of goes along with the Golden Bomb Rush Reawakened event. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Golden Bomb Rush event is, like, the best way to get XP on your characters, okay? It is, bar none, the best. If you go here to Stage 11, Golden Bomb 6, you run it times 9, you get 684,000 XP per run, and that's for three characters. And then, you also have this one-a-day Golden Bomb. This one gives 777,000 XP. 777 xp once a day and believe me over the course of like the 16 17 days that this event goes on this really adds up so make sure you're doing both of those now the one setback is you're going to need a lot of stamina if you choose to just kind of jam this over and over again in fact uh doing some kind of rudimentary math i can tell you you know from like level 65 to 66 is like between you know 1.7 to 1.8 mil going all the way down to 80 you're looking at like a little over 2.1 mil so average that out it's about 2 million experience a level from level 70 to 80 for 20 million total experience uh based on running this you know nine times 50 stam refill per pot uh you're looking at like 105 to 106 refills to get one team of three up 10 levels okay now we have 12 characters in the game so when you're looking at this uh you might have to try to you know be efficient right um because yeah you're looking at like to get half of them to level 80 you know if you wanted to do it right away you're you're gonna need like 210 plus uh stamina tonics so ration that out use the free one they give and also you know you do earn free stuff you've got 17 days with free stamina earning plus some other event stuff you're gonna do to get xp so I think that that's, that's pretty good, and I think everybody should be able to mostly get their entire squad uh, to level 80 by the end of this. Now, why is level 80 important? This is something I've talked on in, in previous videos where I've, I've looked at the, you know, the character growth stream and, and showed kind of like, okay, you know, over these 10 levels, if you add all this stuff together, you know, these are, this is what you get, right? You end up with this amount of health, this amount of attack, you know, whatever. And it looks pretty paltry. However, what I did not cover in, in that previous video is that, you know, we've now gotten 30 extra levels unlocked, right? Originally, level cap, I think, was at 50. And over the course of getting those 20 to 30 levels, what really increases is the percentage on the equipment that we put on. And I want to show you an example. So, for anybody who watched my Leviathan EX1 clear, this is going to look uh, pretty familiar. This is a screenshot of my Red 13 that I used for that clear in the video. And one of the things I had a lot of difficulty with was getting his HP up. I needed him over Aerith's HP. And Aerith, like, I think she had like 8,800. It was a real chore. I had so many sub weapons on him trying to give him HP up, and I just couldn't get there. What I had totally forgotten about was that I had neglected his stat stream since like page two. I had 600 memories for red. I ended up spending all those after I cleared it, but this is what that looked like. You can see here, there is a humongous difference in just doing an extra like three or four pages of stat stream, right? 5,000 plus HP added. And I did not change a single other thing on his equipment or anything this is purely from stat stream with the equipment he already had but like i said those percentages are what really really amp up this number because he might have only gained a thousand or so maybe 1500 hp over the course of three pages worth of stat stream but when you add all those percentages to that hp it, it's multiplicative right and the same can be said for physical attack and magical attack, just not to as large of a degree. But I just want to reiterate why it's even more important than just the numbers you're getting in the stat stream. The other thing I want to touch on real briefly in the Golden Bomb Rush event 
is that when you are doing uh, like the stage 11 or any of the golden bomb stages, if you're new to this event, just know that obviously there's two stages. There's a silver bomb followed by a gold bomb. And what you wanna do is ideally have one member of your party that has a fast charge limit, one that's like 800. So uh, for this, I've been using a lot of red 13 because if we look, his sled fang is at 800 charge speed, right? Tifa has some. Everybody, I think more and more characters are getting some fast charge ones, but you wanna have one of those in there and it'll charge by the end of the first bomb kill. Then when the second bomb comes up, you jam that limit break. And if you get it before his little sigil thing pops up, it'll instantly kill him, thus saving you like 50% of the time in the battle. And that's a big deal, something to think about. The other thing to think about, again, if you're new to this, is the way I set my team up, uh, set them up with as many sigil boosts as you can, and then I just stick that sigil with the sigil boost in. I don't even put any other ones in. That way the AI only has one sigil they can cast. It's the strongest one and you'll get through those sigils way faster. Coming back to the notices, we also see that the critical threat event, Galen Balor has been updated. And so now there is EX3 and there's gonna be the crash as well. I have not attempted EX3 yet, but with the 300,000 recommended power, I imagine this is gonna be pretty difficult. Um, if I'm able to clear it, I will come out with a guide for that. So be on the lookout for that as well. Um, we also got another wind weapon for Matt with that, which I think is great, which, you know, is pretty par for the course, giving a second weapon that does kind of identical things as the first one. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, is the Coliseum of the Chosen. I'm really excited for this because it does a few things that I think are really well done and very much needed for the game. If we go in here and look at our battle tower, we can see that there are now three more towers. This is the Coliseum of the Chosen, and there's three different towers, Amber Tower, Cerulean Tower, and Emerald Tower. What makes this awesome, in my opinion, is one, it's restricted to the characters you see, right? So anytime you're doing Amber Tower, you can only use Cloud, Barret, Tifa, or Red. Right, the same goes for the other towers. I think that's important because it gives us a reason to care about more than just our main three or four characters, or maybe even five, right? So uh, like this here, I can tell you, I'm really happy that I've been building Kate. Uh, you know, Aerith's good, but I don't use either one of these other two very often. And so this gives me a reason to care about them. I think that's a big deal. I can tell you, I hardly ever use any of Glenn, Matt, or um, Lucia. So this is going to give everybody a reason to start wanting to build characters that they've been neglecting or they don't normally use. And I think that's fun because it, each character kind of has their own different type of style and strategy. And ultimately, it just makes the game um, more versatile, have a little bit better depth to it. Very, very happy about that. Now other thing I'm really happy about is every content creator in the world would tell you that, you know, it was not hardly worth doing videos over this Tower of Cetra because nobody really cared, right? Even me, I mean, I, I cleared for floor 70 and then I cleared a few more floors and just quit. Like I just didn't do anymore. I didn't get stuck at, at 73. Um, I just was like, yeah, okay. And the rewards are good. They're not amazing, but they're pretty good. People just for some reason never really cared. These though, what they've done here is you have to care. <laughs> I mean, this is the way I see it anyway. Why do you have to care? Not only are the rewards good, but you get these, the noble memories. And noble memories are a new thing. We have not seen those before and they are necessary to unlock the growth in the stat stream or the nodes, whatever you want to call that. So if we look at Kate's here, I, I pushed him up to 80 to see this because I don't know if you'll see it much before that because here everything looks kind of normal. Uh, and this is like where you'd be unlocked around like 72, I think, 75. But then once you come up here on this last page, you'll notice suddenly you start needing these noble memories to unlock a lot of the stuff, not all of it, uh, some of it's still okay, but 
but some of it you have to have the normal memories. And uh, I like that because now it's not about forcing us to do the tower. It's more about giving us a reason to do the tower, right? Giving us rewards that feel totally worthwhile to do. Sorry, I just, I know the light just got different, but uh, it's it's getting ready to rain here and it's awfully dark outside. And I realize that I'm probably getting a little bit hard to see, so I turned some lights on. Um, okay, so yeah, those are the things that are new. And uh, what I'm, like I said, really excited about is these are the kinds of things I think the game needs. We need a reason to want to do the content. And if it's unlocking more strength for our characters, uh, like we see in this in this growth here, um, the stat stream, that is something we're going to do. I'm really excited about that. Obviously, the level increase is good because it's going to help us do some of that harder content that we've been struggling with. I, I think everything is, is picking back up. I really hope that we're going to continue this momentum. And uh, that's that's kind of all I have for now. I'd love to hear your thoughts, um, you know, whether or not you've got enough stamina saved up or if you've been burning it on previous events, if it's going to be kind of, uh, you know, you'll have to be doing this still 15 days from now to get everybody there. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you've tried EX3 or anything in the crash, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that as well. I also have a Discord server. There's a link in my uh, profile on YouTube. So come join us. Also subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.